This is Dumb Down Life, number 62.
and that was the people with he's just one of a kind we've got a special guest on tonight's Dundown life hello darren not really a special guest well kind of a special guest <laughs> it's been a while just a little I was thinking, if you're intending on keeping me a surprise, you probably don't want to put in the show notes either that I'm going to be on there. <laughs> so how are you? Uh, good to be back in the land of broadband. <laughs> yeah, more importantly, where have you been? Uh, middle of nowhere, it seems. Um, we've actually got dial-up, and um, it's not until you spend more than a, a week on dial-up that you realise just how appalling it is. Um, I think that the thing that killed the internet more than anything else was all these flash adverts. It seems that anything, any website you go to, no matter how how well optimized it is, if they stick a flash banner at the top of it, that's it. It's no longer any good for um, for, for dial-up. And yeah, having to try and access the internet on a the old modem was. Um, like a, a trip back into the into the eighties. <laughs> I can remember when um, you said you were going and you were talking about the fact that you'd only be on dial-up. That you said, I don't think it's going to cause me too much trouble because I'll only be doing mail. Yeah, I won't be able to do YouTube and stuff like that, but I don't think it's going to affect me too much. Um, that's not been the case then. It's not. Well, just doing mail. Um, the last time I sort of did any dial-up, it was um, fetch offline notifies you you got new email and then you read it at your own leisure without being connected and that just doesn't seem to work properly anymore you open up an email and straight away it then tries to reconnect to the internet to download the pictures and to, to, and it just it was horrible um, fiddling around and try to get sort of low bandwidth options and things working but uh, I think that the best um, low bandwidth option was using the, the iPod Touch because that re that does seem to pull everything down while it's got Wi-Fi and seems to be much better um, configured and set up for having a non-continuous connection to the internet. But uh, I was able to read things like the BBC News website and, and things like that and reading about how everyone's complaining about the cold weather. <laughs> cold weather it was bad um, it was bad no no it wasn't bad <laughs> well, while I well, while I was out there in the states in Missouri um, we had cold weather as in I went outside to take photographs of the snow and stuff to send back home took my gloves off for maybe 15 20 seconds to take my camera out my pocket and by the time I'd taken my camera out my pocket I couldn't feel the tips of my fingers yeah, it's not quite been that bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, very few pictures of the snow because I couldn't take pictures with the gloves on and couldn't take my gloves off for long enough to do it. <laughs> uh, I, I've never experienced cold like that before. You, you, you out there for, for too long and you really couldn't feel you, the tip of your nose, uh, ears and stuff. So it, it was bitterly cold. I, I think you had, what, minus 22 it was the record for for some part in England, and it, it was it was below that. Out in really? Missouri. Yes, absolutely. I mean, the the coldest that we got here for sort of where I live, um, it was I think it was only about minus six, minus seven. Yeah. So I mean, that's not bad at all compared to minus twenty two. But you can almost feel the the ice as you breathe in. It was it, it it was strange because. The sun's bright, and it reflecting off the snow meant that it you really wanted to put on sunglasses, and yet it was bitterly cold. I've never actually been skiing, so I've never experienced that before, where you got all the uh, snow blindness. But um, yeah, that's that's what we were experiencing out there. And um, what I actually did, we went out to um, the weather out there when I got there wasn't too bad. Um, around Christmas, it started to get bad. For New Year. We, dro we um, flew from Chicago out to California. In California, it was T-shirt weather. <laughs> <laughs> so what actually happened was that the morning uh, we were flying out to California, uh, I was clearing the snow off of the car, and uh, I, I actually managed to lock the keys in the car while I was clearing the snow. Oh, no. Yeah. Um, <laughs> thankfully, I had 
Steph and Karen with me, and, and they seem to be apt at being able to get into cars. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Carol, Carol went to the uh, petrol station next to the hotel and asked the guy in the petrol station for something like um, you know, like a jimmy or something that I can open a car with. And the guy <laughs> gave her something. <laughs> fantastic and then she gave it to Seth and within seconds Seth has got the car open <laughs> but didn't that set the alarm off mind you, 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 you no, because I got the keys in the, in the ignition with the engine running and then shut the door and it all locked up ah right yeah so the, the alarm wasn't on it was just that the um, the, the, the doors were locked um, yeah then we drove well we drove probably a couple of miles and it took us a good 10 20 minutes because of the weather um then got on the plane with scarves and hats and coats and everything got if got off in california and it was i'm not quite sure what the temperatures were because i'm still getting my head around the fahrenheit and centigrade um i, I just can't get my head around that it's but du- yeah, it double it and add 32 or something isn't it double what and add a 32 i yeah. don't know you double the centigrade and add 32 to it and that gives you a rough rough idea of what the the fahrenheit is so, so i was reading the other day minus 40 is the same in centigrade and fahrenheit and that's the point where they intersect and there's, I, there's another point in the positive side isn't there no there shouldn't be yeah there is sure there is no because they then no, they yeah, you're right. At different values, so they they won't intersect again. Yeah, ignore me. I'm I'm stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, in in um, Chicago, we were in a a hotel which had been closed for four years, and they were just working on renovating it and getting it going again. It turns out we were one of five people in this hotel. And uh, the hotel had opened at the beginning of the week, and the snow had started in the middle of the week. <laughs> they hadn't got the whole heating system going. The only heating was actually in the rooms. You come out of the room, and the corridors were bitterly icy cold. I kind of know that feeling, actually, because uh, the the flat complex that I live in, there's no heating in the corridors there. Yeah. So I've got a nice and warm flat at six o'clock in the morning when I'm ready to go to work, and then you open the door, walk out, and you can see your breath. <laughs> but yeah, you could do that in the in the hotel. You could see your breath. Um, if we didn't have fridges in the room, but if you wanted to keep your your drinks cold, you just stood them out by the door <laughs> in the corridor. <laughs> <laughs> and they got icy cold by the time you wanted them. But, uh, yeah, it was a real mixture of different weathers, and then to come back here on Friday and uh, I believe the temperature was about one or two degrees and again it was it was quite hot for me to come back over here <laughs> um, and w- how was the house when you got home because I know you had a bit of trouble didn't you just a little bit of trouble uh, the house was wet oh. come here dog dog sorry oh she's I've missed quiet. that she's been quiet all day <laughs> <laughs> talking and recording something she's barking um, yeah the house was a little bit wet because uh while I've been away, um, a, a pipe up in the attic burst, and uh, yeah, well, wasn't too happy with that because I tried to get in contact with the insurance company, and um, because it's all 0854 numbers, I can't dial those from the US. So, um, well, Lance, I got in contact with you, <laughs> and what did the people say? They said that um, yeah, it's absolutely fine for me to deal with your issue. Um, but they need a phone call from you to confirm that uh, to give me authorization to deal with the issue. And what was the problem? That I you can't couldn't get phone in contact them. them in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, absolutely no help whatsoever, was it? No, nope, no help whatsoever. Um, had similar issues with the bank in that um, while I was out there, one of my cards got um, withheld. I phoned up the bank and. Um, told him the situation their, their first response was well according to our systems it hasn't been withheld <laughs> i can assure you it has in that case i'll just go back to the shop and ask them to give me the card back yeah that'll work um i said okay well we've, we've cancelled the card and i said well can you send me another one well we can only send it to your home address <laughs> and there's a small problem here i'm not at my home address i'm phoning you from the states oh well in that case what you do is you change your home address to be 
the the hotel in the states or wherever you're living in the states and then we'll send it out to you and it took five days for them to change the address uh, so how did you prove that you were you to change the address the normal thing the whole mother's maiden name inside leg measurement you know um first but, but, pen. but surely yeah. if somebody from a board however they managed it manages to get your information it's that easy to get a card to change the home address and get everything transferred over to a, an address in a foreign country. The thing is, um, is the perceived security that um, banks have. Um, I don't know whether you've got this with your bank, but at the moment, if I want to log on to my internet banking, I've got a calculator-sized thing that I have to slip my bank card into put my pin number in and all this sort of hoops to no. be able to get to online banking i've got none of that yeah see i've got, I've a, got it but i've, I've got a customer number yep. a keyword that yep. okay they supply me with the customer number i supply the keyword when i set up the online banking and then i've got a, a six digit pin number of which they ask for three digits Right now, if if the is it an eight digit customer number they gave you? Um, I believe so. Yeah. So it's an eight digit number that most people aren't going to be using that frequently enough to memorise it. I haven't got a clue what it is. So you've got it written down somewhere, which is stupid in its own right. Yes. Probably on the same bit of paper as you've got the password and the pin number written. On. Um, in it's your got wallet the, with your card. <laughs> no, it's not in my wallet, but, but and it doesn't have the password on it because I know what that is. But it does have my customer number and that's my pin the thing number. That happens is that people will put it on a on a card all together so that they can find it, and then they keep it in the wallet with their bank card. Yeah, so somebody nicks your wallet, they've got everything. Yeah. Well, what I'm uh, trying uh, to your do bank, your wallet's got your um, driving license, so it's got your date of birth. Yep. And your address, which are another two things that they typically ask for. And I guess uh, if you're an unmarried woman, it's got your mother's maiden name on it. Oh, no, it wouldn't have, would it? God, no. I'm having a dumb day. <laughs> well, the mother's maiden name is about the only thing that's that's unusual. But then you look at Facebook and get the data. Well, and apparently genealogy sites are very hot for um, people using to get maiden names. Because once you've got yeah. all the other information, just type in your information here and search your ancestors. Um if they've got all that information, it's not difficult for them to find your mother's maiden name. Yep, yep. But this is why the the, the pin number, the, the four-digit pin number, and getting people to memorise that is so important because that kind of thing um, isn't something that you're going to find on Facebook or genealogy sites. No. Or well, what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to log into my... Um, online banking site once or twice a day um, I've been doing this since New Year I mean I'm I have a terrible memory anyway but uh, I'm trying to log in once or twice a day in the hope that uh, it will sink in because I'm, I'm trying to sort of type it in by memorizing blocks of numbers you know sort of yep. a series of three a series of three a series of three and hopefully it will sink in so then I can destroy these bits of paper and yep. remove that from, from sort of temptation so to speak and the, the other thing I've, I know we've spoken about this before, but with with regards to like passwords and the like, it's always helpful to have a certain format that you use. So, if for example you like um, the the Twilight books, then you might um, have your password be um, Edward zero one, Edward zero two, Edward zero three. Then it would be one of the other characters zero one, zero two, zero three. So it sticks in your memory, but it's not necessarily something that's going to be obvious for for somebody else to to look up. Yeah, you just have to remember which iteration you're on, don't you? Well, yeah, and, and quite often now, a lot of sites have actually dropped the whole idea of three strikes you out. And what they'll do is three strikes, and then you've got to wait for a while. So if you have forgotten which iteration, then it's then you go through the the one, two, three, and then you wait for a little while. Then you do the four, five, six, uh, and and you come up with it and eventually get in. But you're not completely random and completely lost as to to what your password might be. Yeah. Well, it's nice to have you back, Darren. 
Yeah, that completely sort of turned around that topic of the conversation. <laughs> as, as as of old, we we start on one thing and sort of drift into something Some, else, don't we? Something else, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They 
I'll stand upon and shout They hope there is no doubt They finally broke the chains Feel the blood that runs through their veins
and that was Teelan Hrovratic. And, um, and <laughs> Sorry, just Teelan who? Yes, I know. It's um, Teelan Hrovratic. H R O V A T I C and Times of Greed. And um, note to self. Look how long the pieces of music are that you've chosen before you decide to put them in the show. <laughs> this is going to be a 15-minute show with a nine-minute song in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> so, um, it's the new year. Have you made any New Year's resolutions, Darren? Never do, never will. No, I'm kind of like that, but I've also kind of made one. Um, by default, really. Um I do want to get fit and I do want to lose weight and I have sort of decided that maybe I ought to get around to doing something about it this year but um, my hand has been kind of forced um, because one of the uh, people at work, one of my bosses, she's um, doing a charity walk and what she's doing is the national three peaks challenge which have you heard of that um i thought it was the sort of thing that boy scouts did and so forth but it's often done as a, char- a charity thing as well isn't it yeah uh what it is is the three national peaks um ben nevis in scotland scarfell pike in england and snowden in wales and the challenge is to climb all three in 24 hours and that includes is that in between the two. <laughs> no, <laughs> but it does include the travelling time between the, the the three peaks. So the I think you the the standard way of doing it is you start off in Scotland and do Ben Nevis, drive down into Cumbria and do um, Scarfell Pike, and then drive across to uh, Wales and do Snowdon. Yeah. Now she's she's a relatively fit person, but um, not that fit. Because it is, it's quite a quite a heavy challenge. Yeah. So I, I she was sort of discussing it at work, and I said, "Oh, you know what you want to do if you're looking for sort of training and um, something to give you an idea of how much more you need to do. You want to do the um, the Yorkshire Three Peak Challenge, which is um, Ingleborough Tor, Penygint, and Wernside." And they're, they're three hills that are, they literally form a triangle. And the base camp is in the middle of the three. And yep. they're, I mean, they're nowhere near the scale of the other three main ones. They're only sort of a couple of thousand feet. Um, and I said, yeah, yeah, you want to do that? And she says, great, yeah. Have you done them before? I went, well, yeah, I've done them all individually uh, when I was in the scouts. Done them quite a few times. She said, oh, well, you ought to come with me then and do it with me. <laughs> So I'm like, shit. <laughs> Can't really say no now, can I? <laughs> so, so when is that going to be then? Well, she's doing the the actual, the, the main three peak challenge. I think she's doing that in June or July. Right. Um, so we're thinking of doing the the Yorkshire three peaks in April time, which now gives me what, three, four months, three and a half months now, uh, to get to a state where I can actually do it. So what have you scheduled or what are you planning to do? Well, I'm doing an awful lot of walking, really. Um, yeah? Yeah, we've, we've got a gym at work, and after work I've been going down into there and just getting on the treadmill, not running, walking at a, a good pace. And I'm up to about an hour on the treadmill uh, which gets me about three miles uh, and I'm doing this at an incline I've set it at a, a three degree incline yeah no three percent incline um, and I'm doing that in yeah I'm doing about three miles in an hour uh, and yesterday I walked to find and back which was about five miles and I did that in an hour and a half so five miles there, five miles back, or n- no, five no, no. miles in total? Five miles in total. Okay. And I did that in about an hour and a half. Yeah. So it's now basically just a case of um, extending and continuing. Yeah. The, the, yeah. 
the UK, the 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 um, UK, the the Yorkshire Three Peaks one is twenty three miles in twelve hours. So I, I don't know what the total mileage of walking the the main Three Peak Challenge is, but that's in twenty four hours. Yeah. And they do say that it's it's kind of on a par with it because of the the shortness of time that you've got to do it in. I yeah. mean, twelve hours to do what is essentially a marathon distance. Yeah. Um, doesn't sound yeah. difficult because I mean you get people do the London Marathon in eight hours, but yeah. they don't have to climb up three bloody great hills. Yeah, <laughs> with all the stuff that you've got to carry with you to be safe. Yeah, yeah. Because regardless of whether you're camping overnight, okay, you're not carrying tents, you're not carrying um, masses of food and change um, sort of extra clothing because you're doing a weekend hike um you are still carrying food and water and um emergency kits and a, a spare yeah. change of clothing in case you get caught out um waterproof gear and all of that kind of stuff that you you have to take with you if you go in hill walking anyway yeah. um so it, it is going to be a challenge and it's not it's one that i'm not sure that i am physically up to is the Yorkshire Peaks Challenge a, a sponsorable thing as well? Is that? Oh, I believe it is. Yeah. Um, you know, have you considered doing it that doing that for sponsorship or? Uh, no, because I'm not confident enough in my ability to actually get there yet. But doesn't that give you the motivation though, if you know that you're doing it for you know for um, some charity? I, I suppose it could do. Um, it certainly wouldn't. It certainly would remove any sort of quitting option i suppose wouldn't it exactly but yeah. then again i don't want to kill myself <laughs> <laughs> oh i don't think you'll kill yourself but, uh, and certainly not what, in the name of charity <laughs> yeah uh what we have sort of talked about doing is um something before that as well um maybe going up and doing one of those three peaks um just on one day just to see how we get on with that so sort of yeah. again breaking it down into smaller bits um if i can get myself up to say a 10 mile hike yeah. um then it's worthwhile going up into yorkshire and doing one of those three peaks uh you know like driving up on friday staying up there friday night doing the hill because you should be able to do a hill in the morning if you can do all three in 12 hours you should be able to do one in sort of maybe three absolutely um and then you know, chill out in a pub for a day and come back home the same evening or something, you know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we're looking at doing the three peaks in April. So probably beginning of March time, we may consider going up for a weekend. But as I've mentioned it to, to Sue um, about doing it, she's managed to coerce about half of the factory into doing it as well. <laughs> Because we've sort of said, oh, we're going to do this. And so a couple of the guys have said, oh, we'll do that too. And yeah, that sounds like a really cool idea. We'll come on. So it's like it's going to be um, a company day out up a hill. <laughs> right. Well, do make sure that you keep the, uh, the, the, the podcast updated. And um, well, uh, Funnily enough, I have, I have gone and bought um, the headset with a microphone for the iPod Touch. So I can record voice memos while you're out there yeah that's so, a good so idea. the idea is yeah take the the ipod with me and sort of record a bit of a commentary if i can do it whilst i'm not sort of gasping for breath right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and record some sort of commentary and i want to take video cameras and film it and cameras take pictures and that but, but that's all also waste. i don't want to weigh myself down exactly yeah, exactly yeah so i shall take what i can and record what i can but it could make for an interesting um podcast couldn't it it could, and seriously, give the, the 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 thought, give it a thought about the sponsorship thing for Yorkshire, because I think that would be uh, a good thing to do. Yeah, I I know what charity I'd do it for if I did it. It'd be the the National Heart Foundation. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll have a look into it and see how difficult it is to do that sort of thing to get to get sponsorship, because then you have, you start looking at proper forms and. Well, I'm sure that they must be able to send you a sponsorship pack there, there must be there must be a sponsorship pack there's got to be um but I, I think i'll wait until i've got up to a level and possibly done one of those hills before i think about it because i've got to be confident in my own head that i can actually do it at the moment it's all very nice to go oh yeah we're gonna run up the run up and down three hills no problem but um i think i've got to 
set in my mind that I can actually do it before I start thinking about asking people to pay me to do it. No, not pay me, sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> to uh, donate money for me to do it. Right. Um, we're up to 40 minutes. This is not bad for a 15-minute <laughs> show, is it? Um, well, I'm, I've, I've run out of things to say. I have to say I've run out of things to say. I was kind of thinking that you were going to drop into the next song. Have you not got one to go into? No, no, no. no we we were all out of songs. We were all out of material. So I think we really ought to say goodbye. Ah, yeah. <laughs> All right then. <laughs> so used to the old format where we've got the three songs and stuff that it's just yeah. Yes. Well, we are hoping to get these recordings more frequently, and as Lance said before, um, doing shorter shows to fill the gaps to make sure that uh, people know we're still around. Um, thank you very much for listening, and we shall see you in roughly about a week's time. Thanks for listening. <laughs> <laughs>